Well, hi, everybody. I'm so excited that you're back, and I'm excited to be back. We're going to talk about something um, really important today. If you didn't have a chance uh, last week to watch our introductory video, I do um, encourage you to go back and do that. And I'm going to just take this down for a minute as we I'll introduce this in just a second. So I was kind of uh, rehearsing a little bit. So anyway, um, last week, just to be really brief, I would like you to go back and watch, but we t just talked about brain development. This is our brain. And we talked about how, um, how important that solid nutrition in a clean environment is into developing the brain and how the brain stem is the part of the brain that's um, in charge of all the automatic things, the heartbeat, the um, breathing and all this stuff we don't have to think about. But this is the part that starts that develops first. And as the brainstem matures, it leads to other things such as core stability, neck stability, head stability, eye stability, um, eye reflexes, um, cross laterality, and then all the way at the very top of this brain development, which is in our frontal cortex, is kind of like the school stuff, right? The stuff like the complex, the reading, the decision making. And so how important it is that we have all these underlying components um, for this uh, part of the brain to be fully developed. Um, so the brain stem, uh, if these parts, if this part isn't developed, then it doesn't mean that these parts won't develop at all. It just means that um, they'll be very weak and there'll be, you know, kind of holes in the development and uh, opportunities for growth. And I kind of liken it, um, I do an analogy. Um, when I taught schools and teachers um, in elementary mathematics, I would um, explain that children always go through um, a developmental phases when they're acquiring a sense of numeracy. So um, a child, for example, counting has to come before tens and ones. I mean, there's an order to, to really um, understanding mathematics and to internalize mathematics. So um, a child who's eight, for example, maybe is stuck um, and they only have, let's say they're only in the counting stage, but when they're eight, they're eight, um, you know, is that like second, third grade teacher isn't going to um, be working in the counting stage. They're going to be working, let's say, with a double digit addition. So that child is going to, if, if that child hasn't gone through the stages, then in order to be successful at that um, stage and in that classroom, that child is going to have to um, uh, compensate and compensating with the double digit addition and subtraction what might be counting all because she's in the counting stage. So it doesn't mean that they can't somewhat function in that stage, but it's going to be extremely inefficient and they're really not going to understand what's going on. They're just going to be able to kind of do what they can do just to kind of get by. And the same thing is going to be with the brain that just because the brainstem isn't fully developed doesn't mean we don't have anything going on up here, but, um, um, but it's just not going to be working very efficiently and there's going to be a lot of compensating going on. Okay, so what, um, um, and we remember that what develops the brainstem, that's the integration of the primitive reflexes um, helps mature the brainstem. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at the different movement patterns and then we're going to today first look at our um, first reflex and, um, and we're gonna kind of build in all the reflexes over the next three months. And just to remind you, in case you don't remember or in case you weren't here, a primitive reflex is a response, an automatic response, like a movement um, to a, a stimulus. So somebody like, you know, like a stimulus, like a touch or a sound, or a, um, a movement like of the head, those are stimulus or stimuli, and that will elicit an automatic movement of the um, baby. And the baby needs to do that because that's how he learns to move. But as adults, we don't want those movements, um, automatic movements, to be ruling our lives. And as we grow up into adults, we learn. If we have those automatic movements, we do learn to compensate. And then what does that do? That starts to result in muscle tensions 
toe locking, you know, back pain, neck pain, and um, because we're, we're overcompensating um, to not have those reflexive actions occur. So we're gonna be looking at the movement patterns. And um, the first movement pattern that when babies are born is um, breathing, okay? So the first thing they can do is breathe. That's their first movement pattern. And then they start working around, everything's about mouthing, right? So they're rooting, they're nursing, they put everything in their mouth, everything's about mouthing. And then they start to discover some sense of their center and their um, spinal, uh, spinal cord or their spine. And this one is, most people are not familiar with, this is called homologous. This is when they start to have some development of top and bottom so like two hands and then two feet so um you probably see babies do this kind of thing a lot and then after that the next movement pattern would be the homolateral pattern which is movement of one side and the other side and then as we fully mature we have movement of the contralateral which is movement of the opposite side and that's um, in crawling and these um, I mean, we're talking about even babies, you know, babies who are crawling and walking. So it's not like we have to wait until we're, you know, adults to get here. Um, so these are the movement stages, but just like in mathematics, we have to move through these movement stages. Otherwise, um, we could be walking, but if we're still kind of stuck up in here, we're going to be doing a lot of compensating. So, um, I'm just looking to see um, all right so and one thing I want to remember is that um, unintegrated reflexes will always interfere with muscle strength and stamina and if the reflexes have gotten all their proper use then the, um, the neurons and the nerve pathways in the brains will grow so um, the incomplete integration of the reflexes can contribute to things like you know, anxiety, ADD, ADHD, um, inefficient learning, vision, um, fatigue, extreme shyness, depression, addiction. So pretty much everything that you can imagine is, um, can be linked to, um, to unintegrated reflexes. So, um, so the first reflex that we're going to talk about, I'm actually going to put a movement pattern that's um, up here. I don't um, know if I mentioned, but these movement patterns I got from my mentor, um, Caroline Erickson. She was, um, I took some courses and she talks about these. Um, and I'm going to add one on kind of on top that I think comes even before breathing because it happens in the womb, and that's the withdraw. Um, this is a movement, more of a movement pattern. It's not even exactly a movement pattern. It's, um, it's actually a cellular response um, withdrawal. We're going to talk about that today, but it's linked to the fear paralysis. All right, so this is the reflex we're going to talk about today is the fear paralysis. That reflex starts in the womb at about um, 12 weeks old, and the role for that reflex is to um, uh, I'm on the wrong page here, but um, the role for that reflex, what it does is um, when the fetus comes into contact of toxins in the mother's environment, like the mother um, is exposed to heavy metals or to food and you know foods that um, she has food intolerances, or maybe she's under a lot of stress and she's emitting a lot of cortisol. All those toxins or chemicals, um, the uh, fetus is trying to protect itself. So what it does is the cells will literally close off, the cell wall will harden, and then it prevents the active transport of nutrients from one side to the other. Well, in the, um, so in the movement world, we know that is the fear paralysis because what happened is um, that over time, uh, for example, let's say the baby is still born with it, it should be integrated before birth. And so what will happen is the, um, um, the, um, the, the baby, for example, if it's exposed to toxins, like such as a vaccine within the last 45 days or smoke or for whatever reason is something in the environment, it just kind of, um, 
the baby reaches its tipping point on what it can handle, and then um, it can be experiencing SIDS, right? It, it, the system is withdrawing, and then of course what happens when the system withdraws, then um, the lungs will shut down, the, um, the breathing will stop, and, and um, so that can contribute to SIDS. Um, we, older children, we fear paralysis, we have selective mutism, we have things like um, extreme shyness. So you try to call on a student and, you know, they are really smart, but then they like break down and cry because they don't want to come up to the front of the class. So the whole system is withdrawing and shutting down. But what happens is um, in the functional medical world, we see that um, um, that is actually called the cell danger response. And actually, I just kind of figured, put that two and two together because I recently started um, reading about cell danger response. I said, oh, that's exactly what the fear paralysis is. So in the medical side, they're talking about the cell danger response. And, the, and on the movement side, we're talking about the fear paralysis because this really does affect the whole system. But in general, the cell danger response, um, again, um, the cells, uh, senses an intruder such as a toxin or a virus. It decreases the electron flow in the mitochondria, which it, so it responds by increasing the oxygen within the cell, which increases the oxidation to, as a way to kind of shield itself for further injury. And then it triggers about like eight other different um, reactions um, and or responses. Um, and then basically, again, so, it's in the uh, response of the uh, toxin. And then, um, so what happens is that the homeostasis is disrupted. So there's this homeostasis or a balance between the cell and the environment, but then it kind of closes off and it's trying to protect itself. And so, um, so what happens is if this response, like when the toxin is removed, the response is supposed to stop. But if this response keeps going, um, you know, or let's say the toxin is present for a long time, and so the response is always on. Um, and then sometimes, you know, at a um, at a more a higher phase, what happens is this the the cells kind of get stuck in that response. So maybe the toxin's not even there anymore, but the cells don't, they don't know how to turn off, and so they're always in this um, they're turned on. So um, so for fear paralysis, we get kids so. Um, uh, we get kids that are always in this, um, like this reactive state. Um, so the dog, um, the researchers who research cell danger response, they basically say, yeah, if this, if this um, is stuck when the child is an infant, then what is that cascade going to lead to? It's going to lead to autism and other uh, neurological disorders. If it starts when we're older, then it might lead to other chronic illnesses such as, um, you know, cancer or, you know, other kind of things. So, um, so basically, um, so, okay, so the fear paralysis is activated. One of the ways that's activated is through eye contact. Why? Because it's a stressor. So I know that in some cultures, they kind of make children look at the parents in the eye when they're being reprimanded. Um, however, they are, um, uh, some nowadays, because there's so many toxins in our environment, uh, that can be actually a very fearful um, and eliciting uh, uh, the fear paralysis. So we just have to you know, be careful of like what we're doing and, and what it's actually doing to, to the child because we don't want them to kind of spiral out of control. But what we want to talk about is um, what do we need to, what, um, what can we do to um, help? So if we know that we have a child in fear paralysis. We know it's, um, it's very much, this is the one topic um, we're going to be mostly talking about in the whole three months, all about just movements and reflexes. But this one, because it's on the cellular level, this is the one where we kind of, um, kind of mesh the, the, um, the biochemical side with the movement side because it's so interconnected. Um, so as we get older, the fear paralysis is, you know, you 
I feel like, I literally feel like if somebody came into my house with a gun, I don't know if I could flee. I think I would actually freeze. I, and so I, I know that that fear paralysis is kind of, has become part of my pattern, my system. So the, um, the ways that we address fear paralysis is we have to first teach the body to calm down so it doesn't get stuck in that state. Um, we also have to um, try to remove the toxins out of the body. So um, anything that we think is a burden for the body, such as food sensitivities or heavy metals or whatever, we need to try to remove that. And then thirdly, we need we can take some supplements to help boost up the system because in that cascade, we've disrupted a lot of things, the mineral balance and, and so forth. So the first thing about calming down the body. So one thing that you can do, um, especially if you're in the state, um, but you should be trying to train your body all the time. Even if you think you're calm, you might not be as calm as you think. But um, one thing you can do is you can take on your left hand, you take your finger and your thumb, and then you wrap that with your whole hand of your right hand, and then you just do that for one to two minutes. And you can be doing that while you're breathing deeply, but taking the right hand and um, over the left hand, that helps balance both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic system. So your nervous system has two systems. The sympathetic is the, um, the you know, basically run away in danger, and the parasympathetic is let's rest, digest our food. And we want a balance of those two. We want, um, and when we're in the fear paralysis, we're in the sympathetic um, a lot. We're actually gonna talk about the sympathetic system next week when we talk about our next reflex. But um, in order to just to calm down, one of the things you can do is just hold on to that. And then um, until you start feeling the, um, the, you can feel the pulse on both hands. And once you feel them, pulsing at the same rhythm, that's um, eliciting the uh, parasympathetic system. Another thing is, especially for kids, doing deep pressure all over their bodies. So um, deep, slow pressure. Children love deep pressure. And especially, in, your kid doesn't have to have a sensory issue, but that deep pressure does help calm the nervous system. So all their limbs, their core, even their head, so deep pressure all over their body. So doing that before they go to bed, when they wake up, that's um, they love that. Um, even if they're older, uh, they might still need it. So just because they're not little doesn't mean that you know, kid. They they need to be touched and they need that deep touch for that for the calming of the nervous system. And another thing you can do is essential oils. So oils such as lavender, ylang ylang, um, patchouli, uh, frankincense, and Roman chamomile, they're all calming uh, uh, oils. You can put them in blends, put them in a diffuser. Um, if you know how to blend, you put them in a little bit of like uh, uh, coconut oil or something uh, before you uh, use them. So just uh, do your homework on know how to use them properly, because right now that's not what I'm going to talk about is to how to use essential oils. But those are essential oils that can help um, induce a relaxing state. And then one thing from Brain Gym that we can do is hookups. This is very, very effective when children are upset, when you're upset, if one person, if you have a classroom and you're a teacher and you have a whole classroom of kids and one kid is just like out of control, have the entire class do their hookups. So you just turn your thumbs upside down or your hands like thumbs down, cross over. Your feet, you can't see me in the, Thing, but your feet are crossed, you're going to be um, hooking up, and your tongue is resting at the top of your mouth, inside your roof, and you're gonna be taking deep breaths. And after about one to two minutes, there's gonna be this calm, and if everybody else is calm, that child who's kind of running around the class, even if they aren't in hookups because they're too upset to even get into that state, they're gonna feel the calmness of the environment. So if you're in a family and somebody's upset, if everybody else can get in their hookups, or, you know, or at least encourage the child to know when they're starting to feel like they're, uh, they're kind of getting, um, upset, then they can get into their hookups. And this is getting a little bit into our next, uh, um, uh, into our next reflex as well. So we'll talk about this a little bit more next week. And then the second part of the hookups, you unhook your feet and then you put your fingers together 
and then you keep doing your breathing and that is very relaxing so perfect thing to do if you're a teacher perfect thing to do when they come in from a transition from school or from recess or something have the entire class just do their hookups and they really can focus much better um all right so this that was calming down the body the second thing we need to do to support fear paralysis is to remove toxins so that includes chemical cleaners hygiene products lawn care plastics fluoridated unfiltered water emf from cell phones wi-fi turn off your wi-fi's at night don't have like computers in your room never put your cell phone next to your bed always put it in another room um you know get a clock with a cord a plug if you need it for your clock um and then supplementation so the thing about this is we talked about the cellular response there's a lot of disruption that has happened at the cellular level so what we need is we need a good supply of trace minerals that a lot of us are lacking um, plus electrolytes so that and that can help repair the cell you know the cell membrane because like on one side you might have there's that sodium potassium pump you have you know um, uh, magnesium and calcium you know all those balances so um, a good supply of uh, trace minerals um, uh, d3 and k2 um, b12 um, amino acids amino acids are really important because a lot of our children can't even they're not breaking down their digestion issues and not breaking down their proteins and we need a lot of proteins for so much that's happening in our body so if we just give them straight amino acids they're able to um, re absorb that better and um, hopefully make their protein so they can't take like protein from meat necessarily break it down to the amino acid and make it into the protein so if we give them good um, absorbable amino acids then we're able to um, make protein for the cell repair and vitamin c is is really really important um, and then phosphatidylcholine or just really good healthy fats because that cell membrane is made it's a fat it's a lipid and so we need really good uh, healthy fat and um, then for anxiety we have um, zinc and B6. So if your child is experiencing or you are experiencing high anxiety, there's a high chance that you need um, zinc and, uh, and B6. So for, as for brands, the um, pretty much, okay, so the D3, so there's a few brands that uh, I really like and I can't get everything from one. So the D3K2, I love Quicksilver. Um, as well as the vitamin C and the phosphatidylcholine, unless you just use like really good, like um, uh, just healthy fats. Um, the, the amino acids, I like um, BioPure, um, the uh, uh, chlorella. So the chlorella vulgaris is a really good sort of amino acid. It's very absorbable. It's also a binder. So it's very good to you. We'll talk about mine. Well, actually in this course, I'm not going to talk about binders, but um, but it is a really good source of amino acids and binders. So chlorella vulgaris from, um, it's biopureus.com. And then we have um, the vitamin C from Quicksilver because it's sublingual, that's why I like it. And the D3 and the K2 also is sublingual and it's, um, it absorbs really well. The trace minerals, um, Quicksilver has a really good uh, trace mineral. Um, that's called the keton um, minerals that comes in this bottle or it comes in little tiny vials and um, or you can even do a little bit of uh, like Himalayan sea salt but for your electrolytes that has more potassium and magnesium in it so BioPure US has a really good matrix minerals um, no actually that was the, ele the electrolyte the matrix minerals different the electrolytes has the potassium and the magnesium what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links um, under here in the comments. Um, I can get a lot of those at a discount. So I have um, a full script account if you want to register and you can order those at a discount. But the BioPure, um, you have to go direct, directly to them. Um, and oh, I didn't mention the, the B12. I like the Dr. McCullough spray. But there's a whole, you can take a whole course around B12. So if you're not doing like the injections, the B12 injections, the, like the, um, the subdermal injections, you can, um, uh, that one's an easy one because it's really hard to get kids to do the ones like up their nose. So the, um, 
uh, and I, so that, that one is a really good one. It absorbs pretty well. And then the zinc and the B6, any good brand such as the Now brand or Solary. So I'm going to put in the um, in the links or below, like if you want to use a full script so you can get a discount. Um, otherwise, you can just go and uh, find this up on your own. And um, if you want to make your own electrolytes, you can um, use like two cups of young coconut water has potassium with two cups of water, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, non-aluminum, we don't want any aluminum in it, and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and that's a good electrolyte. That's different than your trace minerals. So um, a little bit of trace minerals and a little bit of electrolytes together um, every day it would be very, uh, very good. Okay, and all right, so this is based, this is a lot more than the biochemical side that I had planned on talking about in these live events. We are going to do a group course um, online starting in September. I don't know exactly the date, but um, you can register on my website and um, or you can just put your name in the link below and I'll make sure that I grab your name. But that's going to be a three month course. Um, every we're going to have a lecture every other week, um, and then the weeks in between will be a Q and A, and it will give you two weeks to try to implement something. And we're it's all going to be about the bio, the um, the like the biochemical side about um, uh, the toxins and how the toxins are affecting our kids. So from here on out, we're basically just going to be talking about the movements. And if um, Next week, we're going to be uh, starting with the breathing pattern. We're going to talk about the moral reflex, which is, by the way, very connected to the fear paralysis, which is why we kind of kind of got into it a little bit today. If you haven't already, please visit my website, wholechildlearningandwellness.com, to sign up for our newsletters or information or sign up for our upcoming course. Um, please like our e-commerce page, uh, Healthy, um, healthy um, Parents, Healthy Kids, or I, I got confused on the names. I think it's a, it says it in the in the chat up at the top, um, where we have a growing product list. So I just added a bunch of items um, on our e-commerce store, um, which we we're putting together. I'm featuring some of Joshua's art on there. Um, I just have some random stuff too, but I have some pages really de dedicated to like EMF protection and red light therapy, and and I'm kind of. Um, uh, really trying to promote that because it's really hard to find um, clothing um, like EMF protective clothing or really um, um, inexpensive um, uh, like red light panels are very expensive so um, I have them about half price from the like the brands that you would find online but they're the same quality so um, um, so, but most of all, please share this with any other parents or educators that you think that uh, need support or that it will help. And until next week, we're putting children first. Thank you.